Hey you guys, it's Amy Gretchen. Thank you so much for joining me today. And for those of you who are new, a big welcome and hopefully you will consider subscribing. So in today's video, I wanna talk about foiling your projects. So this is a hot topic, especially when it comes to December daily, because a lot of people are adding foil to their projects. And there is a lot of different ways of adding foil these days. But specifically, I wanted to talk about the foil press machines and then the foil quill, because those are two of my favorites. And I've had a question about what are the differences do I need both? Which one is the right fit for me? And so I wanted to go through and talk a little bit about the pros and cons to each, how they're similar, how they're different, just to help you in case you are considering one of these options when adding foil to your projects. So let's head to my desk and get started. All right, so let's dive into some of the pros and cons to each of these. And then I'm actually going to make something with the Gemini foil press. And I will show you a couple examples of things that I've recently made with the foil quill. So one of the things that I really love about the Gemini foil press is your end result really looks like letterpress. So because you're sending it through a die cut machine and because there's a lot of pressure onto the plate, it comes out looking like letterpress. And I absolutely love that. That is definitely one of my favorites. The other thing that I really love about this is how quickly it is. So I would say the con to this is this actually, the foil quilt actually takes a lot of time, a lot, a lot of time, because you're just laying down a thin layer of foil. Well, I will say it depends on what you're working on, but I'll get into that later. I love that this is super fast. It doesn't take long to heat up and then sending it through the machine is really, really fast. So I love that about that. A con for this is you are limited to the size of this plate. This plate looks, it is probably a little bit smaller than six inches here. And so you are limited to the size of this plate. Of course, you're gonna be limited to your foil size as well, but you can get larger foil size with the foil quill. They've got 12 by 12. So you could cut it down but you are limited to this size because that is still has to go through the Gemini Junior and it definitely has to heat up. The other downside to the foil press is you are limited to your designs. So let me just pull over a few designs here. So here are some designs that I have purchased. This one is from Spellbinders. I'm gonna be working with this today because it's Halloween -y and I've always wanted to make cards using that. And then they've got some large plates that are like full foil plates. This one is dots and it's super beautiful onto cardstock. You could make cards with this. I think this makes really beautiful like uh, Project Life cards, but also this would be great in um, your December projects. And then one of my favorite, all time favorite sets is the sentiment sets. This also is from Spellbinders. It's got some really great everyday sentiments that you can foil and make some greeting cards with, or you could even make some Project Life cards with as well. So these are great for um, scrapbooking as well, but keep in mind, again, you're only limited to this amount of space, so you wouldn't be able to send an entire scrapbook page through this machine. I just wanted you to be aware of that. All right, so let's go over to this other machine, or excuse me, to the foil quill, and we'll talk a little bit about the foil quill. So things that I really love about the foil quill, which is direct opposite to the Gemini foil press, which is you can use your own designs. So basically, whatever you can come up with in your head, you can use if you've have some digital products for some other companies, you could use those as well. You could do a very simple outline of a word or you could completely cover a word with foil. So that's one of the reasons why it takes a lot of time. And let me just show you a couple projects that I have worked on. So this project is one that I just completed. This is using um, Ali Edwards' October digital kit from, I think it was 2017. 
I really love this sentiment. Autumn shows us how beautiful it is to let things go. I just thought that that was perfect and I really wanted to highlight it on this photo. Can you actually believe that this is like a real place that I drove through um, only a few days ago? It was so stunning. Anyway, I wanted to show you just how beautiful this foiled and I want to show you that I did it, actually I'll just pick up one, that I did it with just this little tip here. I was able to create this from a digital file. I think that that is so, so stunning. Now, if you want to achieve a look like this, this is going to take a long time. This definitely took more than 30 minutes. And the reason why I say I don't know exactly is because I did not time it, but I'm gonna say it took anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes because it is literally tracing every single line of that foil. I'm gonna show you what the foil looked like when it was done. And I also wanna tell you that definitely keep your negative pieces because you can use them on the foil quill and you can make, um, you can use these foil quills to make another piece. Okay, but that will come in just a minute. Here's another project that I used that I made and I'm probably need, let me use this as the back here. Just so you can see, can you see that very faint gold line? Sorry, I'm having to like put it up into the light. So there's a very faint gold line. I used a digital stamp and I just traced around the outside of the stamp. Now this did not take near as long to do because I was just doing the outside of the letters. And then I was able to kind of stamp on and remove some of that color when I was finished doing that. But I really, really love the way this turned out. So there's a variety of things you can do. You can fill in um, your design or you can do an outline of a design. And that's another thing that I wanna talk about since I'm holding these up is the materials you can use. Another pro for the foil press, or excuse me, for the foil quill is the variety of materials you can use. Now, I know that you can use transparency on both of them. You just wanna make sure the transparency you're using is good for heat because this definitely heats up and gets pretty hot. And these heat up as well. So definitely make sure you're using a uh, transparency that you can use with heat, but it works great with transparency. It works great on top of photos, any kind of photos you have, matte or gloss. I have not tried a photo with this. I don't know if the pressure would crack it, but that's something that you could definitely play around with. But you can, you can for sure, obviously use it with the foil quill. You can use it with paper, both of them. You can use it with paper. Um, trying to think of what other, just anything that can go into the silhouette you could definitely use. This is going to be limited to the thickness. Um, obviously, you're not gonna want anything that is too too thick. So it can really work with a variety of foils, which is really great because the laminator or the mink machine cannot, like I've not been able to successfully do it with so many different kinds of materials. All right, so again, with the foil press that I really love is you can use it with different sizes. So I wanna show you this mat that I have. This is specifically designed. This is a metal mat that is designed to work with the foil quill so that you can put your project right on top. And this mat right here is for the silhouette and you just stick it on to the sticky mat. So you could use this with the silhouette as well. So you are limited, I guess, to a 12 by 12, basically, or however large your machine can be or however large the foil is. So you definitely need to keep that in consideration is the foil you're using. I also wanted to show you one more example here. This was, 
a, a Project Life card that I used using a digital file. And I, the reason why I wanted to show you is because I wanted to show you how dainty this is. So this was created using a digital file. I believe this came from the Care Story Kit from Ellie Edwards that just recently came out. And for this, I actually used the really small tip. And the reason why I used the really small tip for this, because you can see that this is so dainty and that is so small. But I just want I just wanted you guys to see that you can do very large things and you can do very small things as well. So the silhouette and the Cricut, I don't know if you can actually do this on the Cricut now that I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure you can fill in words. If one of you guys are using the Cricut, will you let me know in the comment section if you've used the foil quilt and the Cricut, if you are able to fill it in. So with a digital file, what ends up happening is when you trace it, you're obviously getting the outer edge like you have here, right? You've got this outer edge. But in the silhouette, in their design uh, software, you are able to fill in that letter, fill in that design. And so you come up with something like this. And I do not know if that option is available in the Cricut. So that's something that I need to do a little bit of research on. I had not even thought of that before um, now. So if you know, will you let me know if that is available? All right, so the cons with the foil quill, cause you know, there's always a few cons, right? The cons with the foil quill are, it takes a lot of time. To fill something like this in, this big one, like I said, this took 30, 40 minutes. It took a, it could have even taken a little bit longer. It took a very long time. This did not take as long, but it did take quite a while. And, um, like I said, because that was an outline that didn't take very much time at all. So in comparison, it takes a lot longer. However, you are limited to the plates that you can buy. And that's another thing to consider as well. You will have to buy every single plate, whereas um, with the foil quill, you could just come up with your own designs if you didn't want to buy any digital files. But it can work with any digital files that you have. Sorry, I think this might be wanting to turn off. Yep, let me turn it back on. Okay, so the other thing I wanted you guys to be aware of, and I think it might be kind of hard to see. I'm gonna see if I can show you. This is maybe one of the only cons I have found when it comes to filling this in, and I don't know if you guys can see it very well. There is sometimes a very slight, maybe you can kind of see it there, a very slight, scratchy feel um, where you can kind of see where the foil quill has gone around and around and around. I can only see it if I am turning it in a very specific way. If I'm looking at it dead on, I can't see it at all. And it actually doesn't bother me if I can see it because I don't mind the texture. But for the most part, I don't see it. It's only when I'm really like trying to look for it. But I just wanted you to be aware of that. That is there. I think you can maybe see it a little bit. That is something that you can see from time to time. On this one, let me see. It's only on the projects that you are filling in. On this one, I can't really see anything at all, to be honest. And look at, like, you guys, I can't get over the fine detail of this. Like, just even the butterfly, that fine detail with the butterfly. You definitely are going to need the pink attachment for this, but it did such a beautiful job. I, I legit can't get over it. All right. And keep in mind, I will actually have listed below all of the foil quill uh, videos that I have done so you can see a variety of projects because I feel like I've used this more this one's definitely newer to me than uh, you can see some of the things that I have done all right so the other thing I wanted to show you guys are these uh, numbers that I made so that is another really big bonus when it comes to using the foil quill is that you are able to foil and cut at the same time and that is a huge advantage over the foil press that only allows you to press it course you could cut it out yourself well that's not true there are a lot of designs in fact let me get out one of my designs here 
I do have several designs like this that has the foil and then it has the die cut. So you are able to uh, cut out some of your foil projects. You could obviously do this by hand or a lot of them are nowadays are coming out with their own die cut. So that is available, but like I said, it is, you know, just something extra that you need to buy. Whereas something like this, you are able to design this on your own um, and then you could uh, foil and then cut that out. So I just want you guys to be aware that there is a, a print and cut option with this um, machine, but then I guess there is one with this as well. So that is something that they have that is very similar, but again, keep in mind, you would have to buy the extra plates for that. All right, so one thing I wanted to make sure not to forget that is actually really important about both of these tools is that you need larger tools to use them. So with the foil quilt, you're going to need a cutting machine. I use mine with the silhouette. You can see it right here in the corner, but you're gonna need some kind of cutting machine if it's a silhouette or Cricut or the brother uh, has a cutting machine as well. And there's probably more out there, but you are, going to use these only with a cutting machine. Now, We Are Memory Keepers does have a pen tool that works very similar to this, but you just use it with your hand. So it's not gonna be um, automated like it would be if you were using it with the uh, cutting machine. But just wanted to let you know that is an option if you were interested in something like this, but you wanted to uh, try it out without a cutting machine, you could definitely do that. But in order to use this specific tool, you're going to need a cutting machine, which is definitely going to set you back. That's definitely an investment. So if you don't have a cutting machine, that may be uh, something that you think about in terms of whether or not this is something that you want to invest in. Now the Gemini foil press also needs an extra machine. You're gonna need a die cut machine. And let me grab mine. So this is the Gemini die cut machine. I have the Gemini Junior, which is a little bit smaller. This is the six inch opening. They do have a larger one as well that works with this. I think there's a little attachment that uh, you put it in in order to work with the larger machine, but you can use it with the larger machine as well. And that is also an investment. So both of these, I just wanted you to be aware that both of them need some kind of either a die cut machine or a cutting machine in order to use these tools. There are some other foil presses out there like the Spellbinder has a foil press and if you have a Spellbinders die cut machine, you may want to consider using or buying the spell, Spellbinders version of the foil press. They are both really great. They both do the exact same thing. So I think it's just going to come down to what die cut machine that you have. So I just want you to be aware of that. If you are looking at maybe purchasing either of these, that you do need an extra machine to work both of them. All right, so I think I've talked about all the things that I wanna talk about. So let's dive in and just make a project using the foil press. Now keep in mind, I am not like the best at this machine. Um, I am definitely still new to it, but there are so many really, really cool things that you can do. And the first thing that I wanna create is a card. So for this, you're gonna need your paper or whatever you're going to put it on. And then you're going to need your plate. So the plate that I'm gonna be using came from Spellbinders. This is called Spooky Greetings. And I think I'm gonna do the, whatever this guy's called. And you know what, let's do this off first cause that's getting kind of hot. It's kind of bending my paper a little bit. So this guy is the skeleton and I'm just going to take off the tape. The kind of the tape kind of came off with him. And then I'm going to get this sentiment that says creep it real, which I think is so funny and um, definitely want to send this to some friends. So this is black, but I'm going to try and figure out what is the center. And one thing that I have learned when it comes to the foil press, one of the things that I thought was really stressful is I just could not figure out, usually what you do with this is you'll put down 
the put down the plates first and then the foil on top of that and then you would put down your card but I even with the grid I felt like this was too hard to figure out to get the placement exactly where you want it so I learned from Giannis Makula who is awesome if you guys do not know her she is a card maker and she makes beautiful cards and she told me about shared with me about this hinge method or she shared with all of YouTube there is a hinge method and what you're able to do is add washi to keep your plate in place and then add the foil on top of that so that's what we're going to do here we are just going to cut a little bit of this foil And I'm going to need some more washi. And normally I'm doing sentiments and so they're rectangle. This guy is not quite as rectangle, but we're gonna see if we can make a hinge out of him. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the stick off. I can do this by putting it on my hand and making so it's not too sticky. I definitely don't want it to rip my paper. We are gonna be going through, like I said, in fact, let me turn that on. We are gonna be going through die cut machine. All right, so I'm just gonna put it on the edge here. And I wanna make sure, I guess I have not done this with so many pieces. I'm getting a little ambitious for this video, so hopefully, hopefully it'll work out. All right, so I think I'm actually going to put cut this in two different pieces of foil just so I don't have overfoiling. Overfoiling is when the foil gets on your project and I wanna try and not do that. So the way I'm gonna do this is I want the, um, it's really hard to see, there's a shiny side here and then a matte side. So I want the matte side to touch the paper and the shiny side to touch my, my plate. Okay, so I have that down. And I'm going to just cut it off a little bit. Probably should have measured this a little bit better. In fact, I can pull this. Sorry guys, we are doing this on the fly. And this is not something that I even practiced. So we're gonna hope it works out. All right, so we got the foil under there. And now we are going to, just kind of a little weird right there. And I'm gonna cut off the top here as well. So I could have done a better job cutting this out for sure. Pull up my guy and then put him back down and just make sure that the foil is underneath him. And I'm just gonna cut around it a little bit. Oh. Keeping in mind, that we want to have the shiny side touching our plate and the matte side touching the paper. So if I was doing this with gold, and I probably will do a gold one, want the shiny side touching the plate and then this matte side touching the paper. So it feels a little bit different than the other. I just wanna make sure the whites all the way down. Okay, so now that we have this in place, we are going to carefully turn him over and put it so the metal is touching this plate here. And you can see that this comes out and pushes back in. And this is what's gonna go in the Gemini Junior. So I'm gonna set this to 15 seconds. Maybe I'll do this to 20 seconds. And I wanna make sure that that metal is gonna get good and hot. And then we're just gonna start this. 
I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, why there is a countdown because I feel like I've never, by leaving the metal on for a little bit longer, I've never had it do anything. And I wonder if it has something to do with the material you're using. You know, the longer that you keep it on, maybe it'll warp your paper or your photo. Um, I still have not tried this with a, fo a photo to see what the heat does to it. It'd be kind of interesting to see what happens. All right, so now that has um, beeped at me, I'm gonna put on this lid. So this is just the top that comes with it. You may want to add a shim, and maybe I will add a shim to mine. I'm just gonna grab this uh, piece of paper here. And then we're gonna pull it off. And now I'm going to send it through my Gemini, which is off screen. You'll be able to hear it. All right, so just be careful. This is pretty hot. This actually is not hot. This is not hot. This right here, sorry, I didn't realize I was so off screen. The handle is not hot and it's not really hot here, but this base is quite hot. So just be careful. Oh, that's funny that it made an impression on that paper. All right, so I'm just gonna carefully lift this off. And now we're just gonna take this off and check the magic, which is always my favorite part. And you may wanna do that really carefully in case you had a problem, you could send it through again. And you just wanna be careful when taking off the washi, just cause you did put it under some pressure. And this is something also that you could use again. Um, I will show you that in just a minute. But here is the finished product. So this is the one thing that I love so much about this. I don't know if it's hard to see because this is um, on black, but it definitely has made an impression in that paper. And I think it looks so, so good. I love it so much. All right, you guys, so that is going to be it for this video on my desk. You can see a variety of the projects that we talked about today that you can use with either of these machines. But before we go, I bet you're wondering if I could only choose one, which one would I choose? Which one is my favorite? And that is a really, really tough question for me to ask because I love them both in very different ways and I use them for very different projects. So with the Gemini Junior, I really love that letterpress look. I'm a huge fan of letterpress, and so I love it when it comes to making greeting cards, Project Life cards, um, bases or standalone cards that I could add to uh, some of my other albums, like Project Life, it, become, it could become the base of a photo or for my journaling or something like that. And I really love just that letter press look that you get with the Gemini Junior or the Gemini foil press, excuse me. But I also really love the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill. I love that I'm able to use some of my digital products. I love that I'm able to design my own. I love that I have that foil and cut option as well. So I definitely feel like I get more creative when it comes to using the foil quill because it lends itself to being more creative where the Gemini foil press you definitely are limited to the plates but like I said I feel like they both have their own kind of magic so of course I couldn't decide so I ended up with both machines and I would encourage you to look at the machines that you have. If you have a, a die cut machine that you could buy a foil press, that may be the way to go. Or if you already have a cutting machine, it's actually a really small investment then to buy that foil quill. So it's really gonna come down to how do you like to work? Maybe you're someone that doesn't like to fiddle with digital at all. And so the Gemini foil press would be the machine for you. 
or if you really love to be more creative and play a little bit more, then perhaps the uh, foil quill is the thing that you are looking for. So hopefully you guys got a lot of information from this video that you were after. If not, you can ask any question below and I will definitely answer them. Thank you guys so much for being here and we will see you in the next one.